Hey everyone, I'm Kelly Morris with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and today I'm here at the Mississippi Museum of Natural Science to talk to you guys about bat boxes. So we get a lot of questions about bat boxes, like where do I put one? Can I buy one? What's the right one to buy? Can I build one on my own? And today we're going to tackle just that. So bat boxes are a great way to provide supplemental roosting habitat for bat species that are experiencing declines in their habitat throughout their range. Not only that, but they protect your home from pest insects like mosquitoes, beetles, and moths. So let's get started. Let's get started with some key criteria for success. The ideal bat roost or nursery is one that mimics the space between bark and a tree trunk. And that is why the overall design and construction of your bat box is critical. Sun exposure is essential to provide adequate thermoregulation, which is particularly important if your bat box is being used as a nursery roost. Adequate placement in the habitat surrounding your house is an important feature to make your bat box more attractive to visitors. Placement is also vital to prevent predators from accessing your bat box. And finally, yearly maintenance of your roost box will help ensure that the structure is accessible for use and still retains its structural integrity. Today we're going to look at two basic structural designs, the chambered box and rocket box. But regardless of the design, there are a few basic features that remain consistent. The most successful bat boxes are approximately two feet tall, at least 14 inches wide, and have a three to six inch landing area extending below the entrance. Here we see the basic structure of a chambered bat box. The number of roosting chambers is not critical, but to help buffer temperature fluctuations, it is best to mount a single chamber box to a building structure or build a single box that contains three to four chambers. Additionally, boxes with more chambers are more likely to provide appropriate ranges of temperature and better accommodate larger numbers of bats typical of colonies. Depending on your target species, roost partitions or chambers should be carefully spaced a half an inch to three quarters of an inch or up to one inch apart depending on your target species. Smaller myota species prefer chambers between a half an inch and three quarters of an inch, while larger bats like big brown bats prefer partitions of up to one inch. It is important that all internal surfaces are scuffed up and textured for bats to be able to climb through the chambers and entryways. Ventilation slots and paint color of your box are critical to maintain adequate range of temperatures throughout the summer and winter, especially throughout the southeast. For Mississippi, we recommend selecting a medium to dark color for your bat box, such as dark brown. Rocket boxes are uniquely designed to mimic the way bats naturally move within hollowed out trees as the weather changes. This is important as the seasons change, as bats will be seeking warmer or cooler areas of the box to maintain their body temperature. Rocket boxes are designed to fit over a wooden 4x4 inch post, which serves as both a landing area and roosting surface. So as with all wood used in the construction of your bat box, this section of post that fits inside the rocket box must not be chemically treated. An untreated 16 foot or longer rough cut post is recommended. Two chamber rocket boxes are simple to build as they consist of two hollow boxes put together, one inside the other. The outer shell should be at least three feet tall and the inner shell should extend six inches longer than the outer shell. The exact heights are not important, but these minimum dimensions should be followed. You might also consider making a taller box for additional roosting space and temperature diversity. When determining the best placement of your bat box, it is important that it is mounted in an area that receives lots of sun, that's in close proximity to a water source, and is mounted away from areas that are easily accessible to predators. It is important your bat house be heated by the sun as much as possible, so we recommend mounting it in an area that receives full sun throughout most of the day. The best option is on a pole in an open area or mounted on the side of your house that receives the most sun. Bats avoid houses placed in areas where predators such as cats, rats, and raccoons can hide and easily reach the box. So don't mount it on a tree or low to the ground on a building. Building mounted houses should be placed high away from predators and in the sun. A masonry search surface such as a chimney is often a good choice. Timing is also important, so we recommend installing your bat house by late spring when bats are returning from hibernation or migration. Whether or not your bat house is successful depends on many factors, but as we have highlighted already, there are several key features that will help attract bats to your house. 
Studies conducted by Bat Conservation International found that 70% of bat houses are occupied within the first one to six months, and that 96% of houses used by bats were occupied within the first two years. So if your bat box has been up for two years with no success, you may want to move its location. BCI also found that 67% of occupied houses were painted dark, 83% of occupied houses received four or more hours of direct sunlight a day, and 78% of occupied houses were located within a quarter mile or less from a stream or river. So while building and putting up your bat box, make sure that you keep these factors in mind. There are many options available out there, whether you're planning to build or buy your own bat box. Here we have provided two designs from Bat Conservation International, which include a four-chambered bat box and a two-chambered rocket box. If you are planning to buy your own bat box, we recommend buying from a reputable source. So now that you've selected the perfect location for your bat box, what species will you expect to find? In Mississippi, the most common species we find utilizing bat boxes are the tricolored bat, Brazilian free-tailed bat, southeastern myotis, evening bat, and big brown bat. So if you already have visitors at your bat box, we'd love to hear from you. Whether you are a bat enthusiast or a bat novice, I hope this provides valuable information for those wanting to set up a bat box of your own, or if you're looking to improve upon your current setup. If you have any additional questions about getting set up, feel free to email us at msbats at hotmail.com. Thank you.